Hi there ladies and gentlemen, here's another tutorial for Fusion 360. So in the last tutorial we created this flange. This flange may be used for coupling up um, say a larger diameter pipe and reducing it down to a smaller diameter pipe. So we drew this flange based on the dimensions that we got from this technical drawing here. And now I want to draw a pipe with a flange on it that matches this so we could join the two parts together. So we're going to create a new design Oops. and uh, we'll start off by drawing our um, pipe so the pipe would fit outer diameter is going to be around a radius of 24 okay um, a radius of 24 is going to give us a diameter of 48 so if we jump over here we want to get a 48 millimeter pipe and then our inner pipe diameter 20.7 I'll call it 20 and we times that by 2 and we get 40 so we've got a 4 millimeter wall to our pipe basically We select this, extrude it out, say 500. We have a 50 centimeter long pipe section. Okay. Next thing then, uh, we want the outer diameter here. Radius is 45, so the outer diameter is going to be 90. So we choose this surface as a sketch. We draw that out to 90. And now the thickness of our flange. If we want to measure something on here, we can select two edges with the inspect tool. It tells the distance apart. So that's 12 millimeters. So that's the thickness of our flange here as well. 12 millimeters. We can also extrude this part out. Join that. Okay. Now, the uh, flange has this curve to it, which was a 4mm radius curve, if I remember correctly. So we can put a 4mm curve on there. Should help match those up. And also on the outer side here. We put a 4mm curve. Fillet those edges. Okay, so now we want to make sure our um, holes are going to line up. So let's just check the spacing between them. If we go from the upper edge of this, lower edge of here which one was our sketch there so let's measure from there to there is 63 63 millimeters across so we need to make sure we have 63 millimeter centers um, if you want our holes to line up. So, we select here for a sketch. Uh, if I remember rightly, our distance from the outer edge to the inner edge is 13.5. So, we create an offset, minus 13.5. We'll check our measurement here. And that should be actually 22. 
Let's check our measurement here. So, 17. So, ounce of diameter. Okay, so we're good. Um, let's go back to our sketch. Our holes were 14. And we'll cut these. Before we do that, we're going to, I'm going to remove this fillet from the outer edge here. I'm going to reduce our pipe size slightly because I think that our holes are going to interfere. So we got to modify, push, pull, turn the sketch off. Let's pull that in by one millimeter. pull that out by two. Okay, now let's put our sketch back. That is a little better. Okay. Now we get our extrude tool. Extrude all the way through. So, uh, we said 63 centers, I think. So if we were to check this from here to here, hopefully we get 63. Excellent. So everything should line up now when we put our flange in here. So this is, uh, you know, one of the ways you can use these tools. Um, if somebody has a part, uh, say a manu another manufacturer has a part and they send it to you, um, the dimensions, you can draw that part. And then the part that you're going to manufacture can also then be drawn. And, uh, and now the beauty is you can check the fit. So this is our pipe with a flange. Let's um, put a radius on here of four and a radius on the outside also. Okay. Excellent. Now, um, the other side of the flange we threaded, so that means that we don't actually need to thread this side. And the bolt's just going to go in, and it's going to thread into here. So, let's save this part. It's pipe with flange. Now we have two parts. We have our flange and we have the pipe with flange. So this flange could be welded onto the end of the pipe. Now, we will create another new project, a new design. And we have a uh, pipe with flange and we will insert it to the current design. Ah, we have to save this first, sorry. So we go to save, um, pipe and flange assembly and now we can insert into the current design let's rotate it around like so and now we can take our flange and we can insert that to the current design and we'll rotate this around like so. so. Now we have our two pieces and we want to align them up. So let's move our flange over there. So uh, we will go to the flange and we're going to move and we'll go point to point. And we're going to move the center of one of these circles 
where the bolt holes are. Try again. Move. Point to point. Select the object. Uh, our origin point. And then our second point. Like so. The capture position. And then now these parts are perfectly lined up if we go to inspect for interference, select the two objects, compute. Okay, so we have a small amount of interference you can see on the inside. Now that's I believe because our flange has this curve to it. So Let's go to a section view and it will help us determine where that collision is and how we can fix it. So we go to inspect and section analysis. We'll choose this and we cut a section through the middle, like so. Now you can see here where our collision is. Uh, basically, the radius of our um, pipe is not enough because it's causing this collision here. You see? These two pieces wouldn't actually meet properly. Now, the interesting thing is, because we inserted this as a um, part you'll see it has this little lock next to it. So that means that we cannot edit it in here. We can only edit the original piece. So this is the nice thing because uh, if you're doing a collaborative project or whatever, um, different people can be working on different parts and as they make changes, it can all be put into this final assembly. And it will constantly update here with the various changes that they've made and warn you of um, out of date parts. And then you can check your assembly again and make sure everything matches. So. In this case, we have a collision problem there, so we're going to go back to our um, um, pipe with flange. And basically, we need to make the radius bigger on this part. That's the inner part there, if we had that flange. Yes, it's this part here. Okay, we need to make that radius bigger. So let's delete the fillet that we have and let's make it five millimeters instead and if we save this then we go back to our original project you'll see we now have this little warning next to it the component is out of date so we click on this to get latest and it will now update our component and now if we look we have still got a little bit of a collision, but it's less than what it was. Okay, now we're assuming that the flange is a part that we are buying and we are making this pipe here. So rather than editing the flange, because obviously we can't uh, unless you're going to modify the, um, the product that you're buying in, we need to make our curve here a little bit more. So instead of 5, make it 5.5. save our changes. Again, it's out of date, so we update it. And now we're almost there. Pretty much. There's still a tiny amount of a collision. She could probably file off, but uh, let's just go and edit our original flange here. Um, we'll make this. It's this part. Uh, 
and we'll make that slightly bigger. Make that 4.5 and I go to save. What I may even want to do is fillet, fillet. We'll put a small chamfer on there. Okay, now we'll go save. Again, we've got an out-of-date part. And there we go. Now we have no more collision happening. Everything fits together very nicely. And now the last thing that we're going to need is a bolt to go through here and hold it all into place. So, uh, we'll create the bolt in the next tutorial. Um, I think this video has gone on long enough uh, for now. So that's how we uh, marry the two parts together. Um, and we can edit them from different files and it will update our final assembly here. So, in our final assembly we, we won't have any editing going on. All we're doing is just putting all of the parts into place and uh, they're all linked to the various individual components. So that's kind of the structure of how you want to work things here in Fusion 360. You draw your individual components or assemblies. Um, you can even have a, um, assemblies and sub-assemblies. So you might want to have individual components that go together to form one assembly. And then that one assembly is put into another assembly um, uh, of more complex parts. Um, but for now, uh, we just have this one assembly here as we only have a few parts. So in the next tutorial, We'll be drawing the bolt. I'll also show you how to insert a bolt from uh, McMaster Car Components, which is a, a repository of components that um, you can already insert 3D models of, um, of common stuff that saves you a, a lot of time. So thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.